Support comes from Soaring Heart Natural Beds, where concern for the health and safety of sleep now extends to everything from curbside pickup and delivery to secure in-store appointments. Showrooms in Seattle, Bellevue, and now in Edmonds, or online at SoaringHeart.com. Hey there, good morning. It's Patricia Murphy. It's Tuesday. This is Seattle Now. The warm, breezy weather this week is looking great for summertime in Seattle. East of the mountains, though, they're shutting down state timberlands to deal with extreme fire danger. We are seeing August-type conditions, and we're still not in August yet. We'll hear more about the conditions that set the state up for a brutal wildfire season in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. After almost a year and a half, the U.S.-Canadian border will reopen to fully vaccinated Americans next month. Fully vaxxed U.S. travelers won't need to quarantine either. It's great news for the tiny outpost of Point Roberts, where families and businesses were effectively cut off by restrictions on non-essential crossings. Canadians will still have to wait a bit longer to come south. An announcement about that could come later this week. The cruise ship season is underway after a long hiatus due to COVID. Royal Caribbean's The Serenade of the Seas set sail for Alaska yesterday at a reduced capacity. The return of the big ships may be a welcome sight for business owners, but critics, some concerned about the environment and COVID, want the Port of Seattle to reconsider. All guests have to comply with health and safety protocols and show proof of vaccination. And one of the Seattle Storm's six Olympians won't be headed to Tokyo after all. Thanks to a breakthrough COVID case, Storm Guard Katie Lee Samuelson will miss the summer games after testing positive for COVID-19. Samuelson posted on Instagram she got infected despite being fully vaccinated and taking every precaution. She was officially scratched from Team USA's first ever three-on-three women's basketball team yesterday. Fire season came early this year. We've already seen more fires and more acres burned than we have at this point in past years. As of yesterday, nine major wildfires were burning across Washington. Fortunately, so far in Seattle, we've had lots of marine air keeping the smoke out of western Washington. But the situation isn't so abstract for John Riley with Chelan County Fire District Number 1. Being on the ground myself, I probably at one time counted a dozen aircraft in the air. Um, And that's everything from large uh, scooper type aircraft that dip down on the Columbia River and drop water to uh, large air tankers that are bringing in uh, that red fire retardant from out of the area and painting ridge lines. John talked with me yesterday from Wenatchee, where firefighters have been battling the Red Apple Fire for the past week. It's mostly under control now, but not before it forced people from their homes and burned 12,000 acres. And that's considered a success. You know, we do an effective job of putting out 98% of fires. It's those 2% um, mega fires, if you will, that um, we cannot control. It is a force of nature. The National Guard is not enough of a resource to come and put out these fires. It's, It's a powerful force that we cannot control. So what can we do before the fire? How can we shift our thinking towards living on a fire landscape and adapting to live with fire? Because we're not gonna be able to get everyone. And I hate to say that, wearing a badge, um, but it's the reality we face. Correspondent Anna King has reported on some of the worst wildfires in our state's history. She studied the landscape in eastern Washington and knows the signs and the dangers of what lies ahead for this region. We called her up in Richland, Washington, to ask her what she's seeing. Yeah, I just think that it's like we've been on bake for the last several weeks, and we've had these consistent 100 degree temperatures, and it's just not let up. It's just unrelenting. And so things that could like handle week one or week two, by week three, they're just looking really stressed. I was walking in amongst the sagebrush and some beautiful native plants the other day, but they weren't so beautiful because they looked like little tiny skeletons on the landscape. They were just like all like curled over and just weasened, and they just looked 
brittle. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, these are desert plants. They're made for the sun. They're made for the dry conditions. And they look horrible. And if you extrapolate that over the entire landscape, what I feel is out there is just tinder dry. In fact, I was talking to a forest um, expert last week from the Department of Natural Resources, and he just basically said, everything out here is just like napalm. Yeah, at least out in the grass and the brush, it, it's it's like setting a match to napalm. Um, it, it's going to go really, really quickly. Hmm. It's just all it's going to take is one spark for us to be in really bad trouble. And if you guys remember the firestorms of like Labor Day last year, like we're at that level now and it's nowhere near Labor Day. We have weeks and weeks and weeks to go. And that means these fires can get very, very large before they start to go the other way, which is, uh, you know, getting stamped down by some rains and some cooler weather. Of course, Anna, this makes me think about the resources we're dealing with. The firefighters can't go on forever. What are you hearing from firefighters and how are they doing right now? So firefighters that I know about are really already stressed. They're already working very, very hard. They're going from fire to fire to fire. There's not much break in between blazes. And they're, you know, they're fighting with helicopters, dozers, planes, uh, hand crews, anything they can put on the fire, of course, but they're already stretched thin. But most crews are needed everywhere in the West. And so every state in the West is trying to get the same people and the same planes and the same helicopters. So they're bidding each other up for those same resources. And there's just not enough to go around this year, especially. You know, I've been reading glowing headlines today about how we're going to escape the smoke this week. And so far this season, our air quality around Puget Sound has been pretty good. And we have been insulated from at least the smoke. But I wonder, how should we be thinking about this? Because this is our state. We are all connected here. We are not in a bubble in Puget Sound. I think you should be thinking about it if you had a trip, you know, uh, to Walla Walla planned for wine tasting, or if you wanted to camp over at Sun Lakes, or if you wanted to go along the Columbia River for a hike. Um, These areas are interconnected and, and they funnel together. And the air that we see over here can get to you guys. And so uh, I think that it is really important to see us as one interconnected area. And just to help your neighbors, like if you know somebody from eastern Washington and you are having clear air and they are not, maybe you do something where you say, hey, come over here for a week. And then you change back. Like if they have clear air and you don't have clear air, maybe you change back for a week. I think we really have to think creatively to have good air in our fifth season, which is smoke season, which is becoming very regular here around the Puget Sound. Right. So regular, the Department of Ecology has the five-day smoke forecast now. And speaking of the five-day smoke forecast, Anna, when are you expecting things will reach its smokiest? So that's hard to say, Patricia. It all depends on the air flows and and where the fires begin in in the northwest and, and in the greater west. But I would just say, be ready. You should be ready now. If you have not gotten your five furnace filters that you have, um, you know, four or five filters ahead of what you need, I would urge you to go get them. If you don't have a box fan and a couple filters to make your uh, purification system in your house, I would go get those. Um, There's instructions online on how to build a cheap air filter in your house. Um, I would have a go bag ready. Like, You should have your keys, your medications for five days, your phone, your water, you know, some gas money and some pet carriers all by the door so that if you have to leave your house in an instant, you can. I have covered and spoken with so many people who have been devastated by wildfire who only were able to grab their keys. They couldn't even find their phone before they had to run for their lives. And so that's how much time you really have if a wildfire visits your neighborhood. 
And so you should be prepared to leave at an instant and you should have a half tank of gas at all times. That's and again, Anna, we're talking about larger fires in eastern Washington right now, but there are hundreds of brush fires burning around the state right now. So it is not such a distant scenario that this could happen here. In fact, we're going to experience a thunder and lightning storm um, this week in eastern Washington and eastern Oregon. There could be multiple strikes or hundreds of strikes possibly, and it's stretching. This weather pattern is stretching from here to Wyoming. So if you think about that, uh, there could be a lot of fire in our very near future. And as I've mentioned before on your show, Seattle is one big urban forest, and uh, it, it forest fires don't only happen just outside of town. Forest fires can happen anywhere. All right. Correspondent Anna King watching wildfires in eastern Washington. Stay safe, Anna King. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Patricia. Thanks for listening today. You can follow us on Instagram at Seattle Now Pod. Caroline Chamberlain Gomez produced today's show. Our production team is Claire McGrain, Diana O'Pong, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow.